Hi, I'm Thomas with RF Elements, and here I will introduce the asymmetrical horn sector antennas designed for 5 GHz unlicensed band. Let's first have a look what's inside the box. There's a graphical installation guide, the screws to mount everything, the handle, the bracket that comes on the antenna, the part of the bracket that comes on the tower, and the antenna itself. All you need to assemble and install the antenna is 6mm ball head Allen key and 13mm wrench. And make sure you use anti seize lubricant on all the stainless steel hardware. Let's go through the RF features of this antenna. The radiation pattern, as the name suggests, is asymmetrical. It's wide in the azimuth and narrow in the elevation. The shape of the radiation pattern is good for applications where the customers are spread out and far from the site. Thanks to the high gain, the distant customers in rural areas will be easy to cover. The landscape profile should be rather flat or mildly hilly. If you use them in hilly or mountain regions, the elevation narrow beam might not be able to cover the valleys well. Our horn antennas generally don't have any side lobes, which is the case with asymmetrical horns as well. Zero side lobes means the antenna transmits and receives the signal only from the desired direction, protecting your network from the RF noise which is the number one problem in the unlicensed 5 GHz networks. But it's not only the lack of side lobes which makes horns great, the asymmetrical horn provides great stability of your network's performance and there are three main components adding to the stability. First, the gain of the horn is stable over the whole bandwidth, so changing the channels makes no difference to the signal level. While these graphs show how the maximum gain changes with frequency, the radiation pattern gives you complete information showing gain in all directions. So the second component of the stability is the radiation pattern. It is also very stable over the whole bandwidth, so it will deliver a reliable connection even to the customers at the edges of the sector. The third component is the balance between horizontal and vertical radiation patterns, so both radio chains have very similar performance. The fact that the horn has zero side loads makes the coverage planning very easy. Adding the overall stability, the horn performance enables unprecedented scalability. You can add new sectors without worrying that the network already in place will degrade in performance. At the same time, the three beam widths and the higher gain of asymmetrical horns make for a valuable addition to the set of the symmetrical horns and further increase your flexibility. This way, adjusting to the changing situation is easy and without any compromises to the network's performance. The asymmetrical horn is very compact compared to the traditional sector technology which saves you the money for the tower rental fees and the lack of side lobes makes dense collocations very easy to do. The antenna has sturdy monolithic body made of aluminium weighing only 4.2 kilograms and a beautiful matte finish. The comfortable handle makes it easy to carry around or attach to a carabiner and clip to a harness. The red ohm is made of UV-resistant plastic and the bracket has stainless steel hardware so the asymmetrical horn will withstand extreme environmental conditions. And at the edge of the aperture is a water drain hole, so any condensed water will simply leak out. The 30 degree asymmetrical horn has a beam switch feature. Swapping the position of the handle and the bracket, the resulting beam width is 20 degrees in azimuth and 30 degrees in elevation. So besides the 30 degree asymmetrical horn with 20 and half dBi gain and two possible settings, there is also a 60 and a 90 degree asymmetrical horns with 17 and 16 dBi gain to choose from. Before you start assembling the antenna, you should know on which side of the pole you'll be installing it on. The bracket is by default assembled for the antenna to be installed on the left side of the pole. So if you want to install it on the right side of the pole, there are a few parts on the bracket you need to flip. Before you attach the other part of the bracket to the pole, make sure you use anti seize lubricant on all the stainless steel hardware so you protect it from gulling and potentially facing problems when repositioning the antenna in the future. When the pole diameter is smaller than 49mm, install the bracket as shown so the bolts don't protrude too much. 
If the pole diameter is larger than 49 mm, flip the bracket for the best result. When the bracket is on, the antenna easily slides onto it and you can adjust the azimuth and elevation. For this purpose, there is a plus minus 20 degree measure for the azimuth angle and plus minus 25 degree measure for the elevation angle. Once aligned, all you need to do is to tighten the bolts to secure the aiming and you're ready to go.